Good evening and welcome. This is Marion City Council meeting for Thursday, February 22nd. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Roll call, please. Mr. Draper. Here. Ms. Etzel. Present. Mr. Jensen. Present. Mayor Abouassili. Here. Ms. Gedalia. Here. Mr. Brandt. Mr. Sternad. Present. Thank you. This moment, at this time, we have a moment of silence. Thank you. First thing on the agenda tonight, we have a proclamation honoring International Women's Day, so I will go down front. We have someone here to accept the proclamation. Bev, would you like to come forward? Is there anyone else here with you or just, just you? Oh. Oh, okay. So Beverly Hannon is here with us. Okay. So, whereas International Women's Day was first honored in Austria, Denmark, Germany, in 1911 and is now celebrated across the world. And whereas in 1977 the United Nations General Assembly adopted a resolution calling on member states to proclaim a day for women's rights and international peace and following the United Nations lead, each year the U.S. President issues a proclamation calling on all citizens to observe March as National Women's History Month as well as a separate proclamation on International Women's Day, March 8th. And whereas in 1979, the United Nations adopted the Convention on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women, providing a mechanism for governments to make commitments, ensuring women's equal access to and equal opportunities in political and public life, as well as education, health, and employment. And whereas International Women's Day is observed around the world and provides an opportunity to recognize and reflect on the progress made to advance women's equality, to celebrate the gains made by women in our society and reflect on the challenges and barriers which women continue to face. And whereas all societies should work together to secure the rights and full potential of women in order to achieve lasting solutions to social, economic, and political problems. And whereas International Women's Day raises the awareness of the social, economic, and political barriers still facing women and girls while celebrating their achievements and the progress that have been made in support of women's equality. Now, therefore, I, Nicholas Abu Asili, Mayor of the City of Marion, Iowa, do hereby proclaim the month of March as Women's History Month and March 8th as International Women's Day in the city of Marion, Iowa, and call upon the people of Marion to observe this day and consider these issues and celebrate girls and women. So I will present this to Beverly. Put a picture okay. here. There you go. Uh, would you like to say something about the event? Now, Beverly is one of the organizers of an event in Marion to celebrate International Women's Day on March 8th. So maybe you'd want to say a few words about that and okay. see if we can get people to go out and, and participate. Well, first of all, thank you very much for doing this. That means a lot. Uh, yes, we're going to have a luncheon at Hills Bank on March 8th at noon. 
and uh, this is to celebrate International Women's Day. We will have a woman from India speaking about uh, differences. She now lives in Iowa City, but speaking about differences that she's observed from living in India where she was in an arranged marriage or is in an arranged marriage and how she has found conditions here in the United States. Um, you can go to our website at www.womensequalitycoalition, no apostrophe in there, um, dot org and uh, buy tickets online. They're $15 and most of that, other than the cost of the food, goes to our scholarship fund. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Hope to see you there. <laughs> well, I certainly plan to be there, so. Okay, moving on to the consent calendar. Okay. Your Honor, I make a motion to approve the consent calendar as presented. Items number 1 through 18 and 21, polling 19 and 20, including resolution 26675 through 26690 and 26694. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the consent calendar. Uh, did you say 19 and 20 are being removed? Mm -hmm. Okay, for separate discussion. Okay, so items 1 through 18 and item 21 and 25. Discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say no. Okay, the motion passes. Do you want to make the motion for 19 and 20 then? Or separately? Your Honor, I make a motion to approve, uh, to receive and file correspondence requesting a change or allow an exception to the Marion Code of Ordinances regarding Chapter 120.06, restricting the sale of alcohol in certain zoned districts St. Joe's Catholic Church. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to receive and file a correspondence requesting a change or allowing an exception to the Marion Code of Ordinances regarding Chapter 120.06, restricting the sale of alcohol in certain zone districts. Okay, so discussion on this? Was there somebody that wanted to talk about this separately? Oh. Mm -hmm. So why did we pull it? We, there will be an abstention on it. Oh, okay. Okay, any discussion on the receive and file? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. And abstentions? One abstention, please, sir. We have one abstention. Okay. And this is a motion directing staff to forward a request to change or allow an exception to the Marion Code of Ordinances regarding Chapter 120.06, restricting the sale of alcohol in certain zone districts, St. Joe's Catholic Church to, uh, for legal review. Second. It's been moved and seconded to direct staff to forward a request uh, to legal for review for changing or allowing an exception to the Marion Code of ordinances regarding chapter 120.06 restricting the sale of alcohol in certain zone districts. This is referring the request to the legal department for review. Discussion. We'll then get a report back on that, Mayor, then will we see if we want to have a that public the plan? hearing? Or is that the plan is that we get a report back from the legal department? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, I discussed this actually with Ms. Bullerman this morning. Uh, she is going to prepare a memo with regard to 120.06. Um, I just want the council to be aware that the memo is only going to address whether or not to grant or deny solely from the perspective of 120.06. It's still up to the council and whomever reviews these whether or not to accept the application put forth by St. Joe's 
for other reasons, such as, uh, as, as the mayor disca discussed at our last session, or the work session, that you know, this is in the middle of a residential zone. Maybe people in the residential zone <coughs> don't want this. So there are other considerations. Our memo is only going to address the issue of 120.06. Understood. Okay. Other discussion? Yeah, I just want to clarify. Um, so that means St. Joe's situation aside, we're then considering changing this ordinance again to change the districts, the um, zoned districts where alcohol is permitted? Well, one of the things that we're talking about in a broader perspective is taking a comprehensive look at 120. Okay. Um, there are certain portions of it that are perhaps antiquated, uh, some, por some portions of it that may in fact be downright unconstitutional. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, uh, and particularly in 120.06, we want to give a more informed opinion to the council with regard to the specifics of that with some possible citations to the law as opposed to it being just off the cuff. But, uh, but we're definitely looking at making some changes to 120.06 in particular. Um, the question is going to be whether the directive is to redraft all of 120 or to do this in a piecemeal format where we take it section by section. But the memo that we're going to receive, that will be addressing that broader issue or, or just this one specific request of the, the one applicant? I believe the memo will be limited specifically to 120.06 and the applicant. It won't encompass all of 120. It will be limited uh, to 120.06 as applied to this applicant and just general concerns of 120.06. So as we proceed forward, I know there's some overall questions and concerns about this being in a residential neighborhood. But as far as pertaining to 120.06 then, if we're going to make an exception to that, is that going to require then a series of public hearings to move forward through, that, through those steps? It would depend on the, if, if the council intends to grant uh, the applicant's request, uh, then that would really, I believe, depend on the manner in which it's done. If it's done in the form of uh, a variance or an exception, or if it's done in the form of a redrafting of 12006. If it's an ordinance redrafting 12006, absolutely we have to go through the full process. Okay. Um, if it's a resolution by the council that would grant an exception in this one case and, and cite that we don't believe that this sets a precedent because we're in the process of uh, potentially redrafting 12006, then I believe it would only necessarily need to follow the procedure for adopting a resolution. Your Honor, I would like to uh, make that a one-year thing. You know, if we change that ordinance, it should only be for this year. If you give them an opportunity and to come back next year, if things go well or poorly this year, we'll know that. So, I, okay. you know, if we change the ordinance, I feel it should only be for one year. And to be clear, if we're talking about changing the ordinance, yeah. we're not changing the ordinance just for St. Joe's. Well, that's we're changing right the ordinance. Yeah. 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 Right. So at this at this point, this this item on the agenda is to refer it to the legal department to do the review and come back to us. But then, yeah, I just wanted to come back for on one year. That's, uh, that would be. I think that would be in the case of making an exception, like like. Well, and keep in mind, we're, uh, my understanding is that St. Joe's is requesting a, a five-day permit anyway. So Correct. a year from now, regardless of It'd the status expired. of yeah, regardless of the status of the ordinance, if they want to do this again next year, they're going to have to go through the application process okay. all over again, and it'll be up for review. Fair enough. One more as, as would any other entity requesting the same. Um, and what's the time frame that you would come back and have this? recommendation or um, I mean this is actually something that uh, that Kara and I have been talking about now for over a week so I think we have sort of the framework of it the question is just how detailed we want to get in terms of citation to law um, I mean if it's something that you want a, a fairly uh, cursory uh, survey of or if you want a very in-depth uh, 
you know, law review article <laughs> type thing. I don't think either of us is interested in necessarily doing that. But uh, I think we could probably get some uh, something that would set forth what our position is within a week. So in March, we'll definitely have that some one of the March uh, meetings? Next meeting. Okay. So, and I ask because either way, St. Joe's deserves to know. And secondly, I would ask um, for a formal recommendation from um, staff <coughs> who would be impacted by this to counsel what they would advise or recommend based on the repercussions of an event out there. So I wanted to kind of give them a time frame of when this might come back. Absolutely. And that, that goes to what I'm saying, you know, uh, you know, the, we're only addressing the legality of issuing the, the variance exception pursuant to 120.06. It doesn't address public safety and yeah. fire's concern. It doesn't address, you know, just the impact to the community and the desirability. We're only addressing that. So don't, I don't want the council or any other department to interpret the report, the memo is saying, um, just because we view it, the law is reading this way and, and the, the exception should or shouldn't be granted pursuant to this section, that it somehow precludes any of the objections that any other department may have. Okay, thank you. Okay, other discussion? Okay, all those in favor of the motion, Please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Abstaining? One abstention. One abstention. Okay. So do you want to? Oh, yes. So for this next portion, I will turn over the gavel to Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent calendar with Mayor Abu Asali abstaining from voting and discussion regarding the following items. Resolution 26691, 26692, 26693, 26695, and 26696. Second. And and 26694. Did you? Are we? Oh, we pulled she that She covered. One. Yeah. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay. Um, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? On any of those items, 22 through 27 minus 25. Okay. I'm seeing none. All those in favor of approving the consent calendar with mayor's abstention from voting and discussion on items, resolutions 26691 through 26696, um, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? Okay. Thank you. Okay. On the public service. Let's see. Oh, I'm still, it's still me. Okay. Moving on to uh, public services. Ordinance number. Or, excuse me, are, are we coming back to 25 on we the already, agenda? It was approved as it part of the regular consent. It was approved in the first batch. Count. I'm sorry, I confused no. that. So you can just make that motion. Yep. Uh, make an emo I'm like to make a motion for ordinance number 18-02, amending chapter 105 of the Code of Ordinances, establishing a commercial rate schedule for non-residential generators. Initial consideration. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve ordinance number 18-02, amending chapter 105 of the Code of Ordinances, establishing the a commercial rate schedule for non-residential generators. Maybe it's just to be clear, talking about refuse. Yes, Your Honor. I'd be happy to go over it if you need me to. No. Yes. It's, it's just the way it's worded. It can be interpreted to mean generators. Electric, gener <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> electric generators. Electric generators. <laughs> it's it's refuse, right? Correct. That yeah, is generators correct. Of, of refuse. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Discussion. I'd just like to point out um, that the proposed fee structures going down. So that's a great thing on all four, um, on all the sections. So um, it's nice when usually things go up, this time they're coming down. So nice job. Further discussion? Okay, all those in favor of ordinance number 18-02, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. This time we have a public hearing regarding the 2017 Northview Drive reconstruction project. Public hearing is now open. 
Um, do you have a recap or do we need a recap? Yeah. Yeah, basically this is the uh, complete reconstruction of Northview Drive from 12th Avenue to 17th Avenue, including the removal of the existing street, new rock sub-base, pavement, sidewalk on the west side, storm sewer, water main, sub-drain, and other associated work. Um, there's additional water main being placed on the south side of 11th Avenue from Northview Drive to 24th Street as a joint project with the Water Department. The engineer's estimate was 616000 On February 13th of 18, the City of Marion received seven sealed bids with a low bid from BWC Excavating LC for, an S for a cost of 611 239 which was 99.3% of the estimate. We are recommending approval. Is there anyone here to speak in favor of this resolution? Is anyone here to speak in opposition of the measure? Okay, seeing that there's none, the public hearing is now closed. Sister Ned? Yes, Your Honor, this will be my, uh, or the, um, uh, motion for resolution uh, number 266697, accepting bids and awarding contract to BWC Excavating LC regarding the 2017 Northview Drive Reconstruction Project, NSI, in the amount of $611,239.75. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 26697, accepting bids and awarding contract to BWC Excavating LC regarding the 2017 Northview Drive reconstruction project in the amount of $611,239.75. Discussion. Can you give us the, re I should have asked this on Tuesday, can you give us the reasons why this road was selected for the major reconstruction? <coughs> I mean, I've yes. been in that area, but I was over uh, one street over so I didn't make it on Northview yep so basically through our entire city we actually the DOT actually drives all our streets and we have an evaluation rating on all our streets and this is one that we've overlaid so many times that when you take the asphalt off that's there now it's gravel so we can't overlay it again so it's to the point that it needs to be reconstructed so we just this is one of those streets where that's the next step is it either continues to fall apart or you reconstruct it. Um, we had have several people that have requested the street be done and for this project in particular, we actually reached out to those property owners to make sure we had buy-in from the property owners before we proceeded with the project um, because they will lose access to their properties during the project. Is this also an area region where we have some uh, basement flooding issues somewhere over in that area? Uh, that I'd have to. Yes, sir, just actually it'd be uh, south of where this reconstruction is. There is some, uh, on occasion, some flash flooding that does occur. Uh, it's one of our points that we do uh, do sanitary bypass pumping. Okay. And so there is some storm sewer improvements that would help that a little, but it's not going to mitigate the issue. Okay, what's the total timeline for the street to be done? Um, so we gave them 65 working days and they must begin no later than June 4th. And for the entire time, the owners will be yep. without access to their... Yeah, they'll have to walk to their properties. Wow. At least it's summer. Gotta be done. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, uh, further discussion on this. Okay, we'll vote. All those in favor of resolution number 26697, accepting bids and awarding contract to BWC Excavating LC regarding the 2017 Northview Drive reconstruction project in the amount of $611,239.75. Please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. We have another public hearing regarding the 2018 Sanitary Sewer Manhole Project. Public hearing is now open. We have the presentation, please. Yep, so this is the removal and replacement of six manholes at various locations where we're basically removing an old brick manhole and putting an actual concrete structure in there. Um, with us switching over to a flow-based agreement versus a residential 
housing. Um, this will help with all that infiltration. Um, sometimes they have to, the public service has to pump out of these manholes and to have a structure that could potentially fall in. There is one manhole at 7th Avenue and 2nd Street that's actually 20 feet deep. Um, so it's going to take quite a bit to, to get that manhole in there. Um, so the engineer's preliminary estimate was $127,550. Um, we did receive five sealed bids on February 13th with a low bid from Eastern Iowa Excavating of $134,645.50, which was 106% of the engineer's estimate. Work shall begin no later than July 23rd of 18 and be completed within 35 working days. There is $300 per day in liquidated damages. We're approving, or we're uh, recommending approval. Okay. Is there anyone here to speak in favor of this measure? Is there anyone here to speak in opposition of this measure? Okay, seeing that there's none, public hearing is now closed. Mr. Your Honor, I have a resolution 26,698, accepting bids and awarding contract to Eastern Iowa Excavating and Concrete, LLC, regarding the 2018 sanitary sewer manhole project in the amount of 134,645,50. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 26698. Accepting bids and awarding contract to Eastern Iowa Excavating and Concrete LLC regarding the 2018 Sanitary Sewer Manhole Project in the amount of $134,645.50. Discussion. I'm just curious, how old would, the, would those brick uh, manholes be? What era? Yeah, I'm assuming some of them are original. Um, and when you look at the old sanitary, there's houses built on top of some of the mains. Yeah. So it's the original town. Very old. Yes. Okay. Is there any chance while the project is going on, since we're down in there, that um, are we going to have to divert any flow or anything like that? Or Yeah, so they actually have to bypass pump when they're putting the structures in, and that's part of the contract. And will the flow capacity still be the same so that the chance of any problem happening during that time period it's being worked on is... Yeah, so they, they try and do it, obviously, when it's not raining. Yep. Um, and then they try and pick a time when it's it's not a peak flow. There are some manholes. Most of these are, are 8 inches in diameter that come in and come out. Mm -hmm. But, for example, the one that's 20 foot deep, they got to remove some storm sewer to get in there to do that. So it's, it's not going to be a, a fun process. But, yeah, they'll, if they, they, they go and they evaluate how much flow is in there, and if they have to get more pumps, they have to get more pumps. Um, for different projects, they will actually hire a company like Roto Rooter, and they will just suck everything out into the truck. And then the truck will go down to another manhole if they don't have the room for the hoses, and another truck will start pumping. So, if they cause a backup, it's their insurance. Okay, and all of that's included in. Yep. Okay, and then you mentioned that they would do it on off-peak hours. So, might this work occur in the night? Is that? No, it'll be due mm -hmm. during the day. Okay, but just off. Most of your peak is delayed. So okay. when, you, when you get up and take your shower, it takes some time for that flow to get there. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Other discussion? All those in favor of resolution number 26698, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. Your Honor, I make a motion to approve ordinance number 18. Dash one, amending Chapter 100A of the Code of Ordinances regarding amendment of access fees for Ordinance Number 17-24, 100A.14, 2015, Winslow Road District, second consideration. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve Ordinance Number 18-01, amending Chapter 100A of the Code of Ordinances regarding the access fees for Winslow Road District. This is the second consideration. Discussion?
Okay. All those in favor please of ordinance number 18-01, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Okay, the motion passes. At this time, we have a public hearing regarding the sale of city property uh, described as the entire 10-foot wide east-west alley adjacent to and north of lots 7 and 8 and south of lots 1 and 2 in block 11 of the original town of Marion. Public hearing is now open. Presentation. As explained uh, on Tuesday at the work session, uh, Mayor, the, uh, this is a public hearing on a project or a, the sale of an alleyway that we've already held. Um, we just need to ensure that the uh, uh, notice requirements was done correctly. So we just correcting a legal description in that notice. So um, this is the alleyway west of 9th Street, north of 7th, associated with the Uptown Dental uh, project and the buildings it's up, so we're really just correcting an error in a publication. So I don't know if anybody's here this evening to speak to the issue, but. Okay. Um, Is there anyone here to speak in favor of this measure? Anyone here to speak in opposition of the measure? Okay, the public hearing is closed. Your Honor, I'd like to make a resolution number 26699 approving the sale of city property described as the entire 10 foot wide east west alley adjacent to and north of lots 7 and 8 and south of lots 1 and 2, all in block 11, original town now, City of Marion, Lynn County, Iowa, and directing manner of execution of deeds. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 26699, approving the sale of city property described as the entire 10 foot wide east west alley adjacent to and north of lots 7 and 8 and south of lots 1 and 2 in block 11, original town of Marion, and directing the manner of execution of deeds. Discussion. Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Okay, motion passes. Um, okay. Oh. Randy, would you mind making the next motion? On this next one, I'm going to turn over the gavel to Mayor Pro Tem. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Sure. Um, I make a motion to approve resolution number 26700, approving the memorandum of understanding, the MOU, with KTRO LLC. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Andy, a second by Tim. Any discussion? Okay, seeing none. Um, all those in favor of resolution number 26700, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed or abstentions? Abstaining. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yes, Your Honor, this will be for uh, making a motion for resolution number 26701, approving a three-year agreement with ESRI, Small Municipal and County Government Enterprise Agreement, EA for GIS software in the amount of $106,500. Second. Okay, moved by Mr. Sternad and seconded by Ms. Gadela to approve resolution number 26701, approving the three-year agreement with ESRI, Small Business and County Government Enterprise Agreement for GIS software in the amount of $106,500. <coughs> discussion? I think we may want to at least clarify, based on our discussion on Tuesday, that we're only paying one year at a time. Right. So it's a three-year agreement being paid on an annual basis. Good point. Other discussion? Okay, all those in favor of resolution number 26701, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. Your Honor, I have resolution 26702 
approving matching funds for the Marion Leadership in Action, the MLIA Holiday Lighting Project and the amount not to exceed $5,892. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 26702, approving matching funds for the Marion Leadership in Action Holiday Lighting Project in the amount not to exceed $5,892. Discussion? Yeah, for those um, who, who are here tonight who weren't here Tuesday, this is a really exciting project. When I moved here six years ago, we began our Christmas card photo taking tradition in front of the big tree in the square and to see um, what's, what's coming um, because of this lighting project and um, how it just adds to the further beautification and making this community more special. This is truly what placemaking is about. So it seems like a very exciting endeavor and it's also nice that um, we are doing a match. We're not fully funding this, so there are donors and other um, residents and citizens who believe in this as well. So I think it's a great thing for the community. Well, and this group has a, was it Joe, a five-year plan? You got a five-year plan on how to bring more Christmas lighting to the uptown area. So to me, that was, you know, the most exciting news because we've been, some of us have been talking about the need for that and how that helps make our town stand out. So that was very exciting to hear that there's a plan in place on moving forward. Other discussion? All those in favor of resolution number 26702, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. Would you like to make your next motion? Yes, Your Honor, I'd like to make a motion for an appointment of Renee Gedalia, 797 Oak Park Circle, to the Corridor Metropolitan Planning Organization Policy Board. Term expires 12 31 19. Second. Second. We moved and seconded to appoint Renee Gedalia to the Corridor Metropolitan Planning Organization Policy Board for a term expiring on December 31st, 2019. Discussion? I'd like to thank you for the appointment. I look forward to representing Marion and all of our interests to the best of my ability on this um, committee. There are a lot of things going on uh, on this committee and for the future of the city and the surrounding region, so I will give it my all. So we have, just for general knowledge, we have three representatives on that committee, and it's the, the committee that uh, uh, consists of representatives from all the entities in the metro area, and it, 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 it's the organization that decides how the federal fund transportation dollars are divvied up among the communities, which we've used a lot of, a lot of them lately for trails and all sorts of great projects. So it is an important uh, uh, committee, and um, I, I serve on that also, and John Bender is the third, third person. So, okay. Any further discussion on the appointment? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Congratulations. Thank you. Good job. Okay, at this time we have time for citizen presentations. Is there anyone here to address the council on any topic? Looks like we do have some people in the back. Please come forward, state your name and address, and uh, you already have the cards, it looks like, so you, you're ahead of the game on that. Good. Okay, state your name and address, and... No. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Amanda Greider, and I live at 1044 Tremor Court um, in Marion. Um, my neighbors and I are here today, and I'm sure that they'll talk to their reasons for being here, but they're similar to mine. We're very concerned about the property behind Adair Pass, that it could be zoned anything but agricultural or what it says in the comprehensive plan. We all bought our, bought our properties based on what the comprehensive plan says, and we just really want to urge you to stick to that comprehensive plan of keeping single family homes in our area um, and in the properties that are adjacent to all of ours. Um, so we just wanted to bring that to your attention. I know you've received some of our emails and correspondence, but to also come and um, take the time to give public comment about how important this is to us as a neighborhood. Thank you. Well, we appreciate you coming and um, expressing your opinion. And we have received all the emails, and I don't know if you received my response, uh, but. Um, 
as of now, there is no proposal. There's no, no, nothing in, in process. Um, and it's unlikely that the land will remain um, um, agricultural forever, but it is residential in the, in the, in the um, comprehensive plan. And for the comprehensive plan to be changed, we would have to amend that. And at that time, you would all have notice of that. Um, I, but I think the plan for that land is 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 residential. Uh, it, that's what the comprehensive plan shows. But if, if that would if that would ever change in any way, we'd have to amend the comprehensive plan and then also have public hearings on the rezoning request and all of that. So, but as of now, there's been no proposal. There's always inquiries, and you know you can't help that. People are out looking for for land to put their projects on. So. That's, that's really what's happened at this point is there's inquiries uh, about whether or not that land can be rezoned or anything like that. But nothing has been proposed and there's not, no project in process or anything like that. So, But you, the rest of you are welcome to come and, and yeah. address us. With, if you have anything to add to that, uh, we'd be happy to hear from you. Hi, my name is Jimmy Burns, Adair Pass, uh, 1047 Marion. Welcome. Also with uh, this group here tonight. Um, reason why basically we're here, the gentleman came to our neighborhood um, talking about putting storage units uh, there on that corner um, for us. Uh, we all went around the neighborhood, asked everybody's opinion. Um, no, 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 <laughs> is what we got with it. Um, every neighborhood we went to, not just our street. So we did a lot of footwork, um, everybody's opinion, builders that are building there, their responses and stuff. Um, they think he's, he came in our neighborhood, kind of scared us, going around talking. Um, he was kind of cocky, <laughs> telling me he will get it rezoned. So um, there, you kind of want to nip it in the bud right away. So I appreciate you guys listening to us. Um, our comments and everything, and hopefully you agree with us and stay with your plan. Thank you. Thank you. I think the one comment I would add is is the comprehensive development plan is a very important tool used by the city staff and everybody up here. So the reverse would be the same in that if you were to have bought your property and the comprehensive development plan showed commercial 100 yards from your, from your property, you know, you cannot come later on and cite that you didn't know about it because we're going to use the same argument you're using. So, again, the comprehensive development plan is very important, and, and we do like to support the work that's the work and effort that has gone into that. Yes. Let's state your name and address. My name is Nadine Greider, and we're 1024 Adair Pass. And I was approached a week ago tonight from from this man that came. And um, I think what shook us all up is he said that it might not get passed this time, but he would get the zoning changed. It would just be a matter of time. So I think that's why we all, you know, stuck together. I want to thank everybody for the response. You responded so quickly to the emails and your concern, and I, I can't tell you how much that meant to all of us. So I thank you again for doing that. Thank you. Hi, right. Aaron Oldfield, 1070 Adair Pass. Um, and to echo what you've heard, we really appreciate the responses that we've gotten. Um, again, it was very alarming to be approached so quickly after buying our homes that as a new development that the comprehensive plan would change and that instead of you know, either a farm or other neighbors that we'd have a, a major storage unit development that would bring in a lot of safety concerns. We have little ones, we're very close to a school. So there were a number of concerns, but again, we appreciate your responses and um, thank you. Thank you, welcome to Marion. Amanda Johnson, 1046 Adair Pass. I just want to say thank you for um, all your help and listening to us. And I do have one question. Um, the, the guy that lives behind me is the one that wants to sell the property um, commercial. Does he not realize that it's zoned? 
or if they keep I, I don't know what he would know, but okay. if, I mean, it's, it's zoned ag currently. Is that right, correct, Tom? Correct. It's zoned ag. Is yeah, there a reason so why he's he trying to push commercial? He can't sell it as a certain thing. He can sell it, but he can't sell it as commercial if it's currently zoned something else. Okay. But he can advertise it to be sold as commercial? Uh, or I don't <coughs> Could he? Yeah. I, I mean, mean, I, I mean, he can, he can tell people whatever they, I mean, I, I wouldn't advise it. Right. Um, yeah. Buyer beware. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I no, guess can't. Be, <laughs> that was just my I'm question because I was confused. We can't control what, yeah. what people will, will say or, 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 or do, but, um, you know, the, the facts are the facts. Perfect. It's zone agricultural. It's in an area that the comprehensive plan shows as residential in the future. Uh, if that were to ever change, it would have to come through the city council. We would have to amend the, the comprehensive mm -hmm. plan. Uh, well, it would go through planning and zoning first, but the ultimate decision is here, and we would have to amend the comprehensive plan and and uh, rezone it to the to the requested zoning, and that would all involve public hearings and notices to all the neighboring owners. And okay, so. sounds great. That's that's why I bought it. I read your plan, and I actually read the city council notes, you know, in the area to make sure it was <coughs> right. So, thank you. Okay, good for you. Anyone else address the council? <laughs> Please state your name and address. <laughs> Bill Ackerman, 2420 Indian Creek Road. I just wanted to um, come in and give everybody an update on Imagine X because I'm really excited. We're in the voting phase now and we just went live with the voting on Monday and we already have had over 500 responses. Um, so I think that's really positive. I wanted to throw it out to the council. It's, we're going to keep it a secret what um, what the results are until we make the big announcement. Um, but we are showing some really interesting trends, and there's some really neat data from SurveyMonkey that, if you're interested, you can stop in, and we would um, share that from with you. Um, but the 23-person selection committee did a fantastic job of narrowing the over 3,000 ideas down to about 1,000, and then finally down to 60, um, which the community is voting on now, and they'll pick their top 25. So I just wanted to share that with you. Did everyone in this room vote? Can you give us the website, Jill, so everybody can get on and vote for their favorite ideas? If you're not familiar, this is our community visioning process for ideas that we want to work on as a, as a community. Uh, and there's a lot of great ideas on there, so you can actually vote for your favorites. The balance. Yeah, there's paper ballots right out there if, no, if you want to, that. but um, there's a link on um, Facebook. You can go directly to MarianImagineX.com or .org and um, vote. It takes less than five minutes. So. Yep. Is that on our city web city website? I, I don't think there's a link on the city website, is there? Uh, I'm not is sure it? if Amber's I coming up yet it. or not, but I, I, it's a good Didn't question. We'll make sure that yeah. it gets on there. As yeah. many places okay. as you can. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Thank you. I got one question. Oh, sure. Uh, when we did Imagine 8, mm -hmm. Now this one I saw is set up in the like a one year time frame, mm -hmm. three to five, I can't remember, three to five, yep. five to ten. Yep. Was Imagine 8 done in that yep. same kind of time frame? I didn't yes. recall that. It was just to make sure that we could get, so that we didn't get um, all these really lofty yeah. projects that were, you know, millions of dollars. We wanted to get a nice uh, variety of projects. So yeah, that's how that went. Thank you. Well, I want to thank the committee that. Uh, yeah, me too. For for their hard work because it was a lot of a lot of work and I attended one of their meetings and I you know it's amazing um, that the amount of ideas that were submitted more than three thousand right and that was a big task to um, narrow them down and cull through them and come up with this final list for the community to vote on so mm -hmm. it's exciting to see what the what the end result will be and then we'll be able to work on them as a community and then. Do it again when that when that list is done. I agree, and the selection committee will be back at it again um, after the voting wraps up. I think it's Monday, March fifth. They'll be back culling through the um, the final twenty five, narrowing it down to three or four. So. And we should add too that the updated. a lot of the ideas that don't make it on the final list, they'll be looking for ways to push those out to private organizations or yes. nonprofits or businesses that might want to uh, make them happen if the, if there's enough. Uh, support behind right. them from the community. We identified that as kind of a miss from Imaginate that we picked eight ideas out of 1,834 ideas and then we just kind of 
put them to the side, even though we've gone through that list now and looked and we saw, we are amazed that, well, that happened anyway, and that happened anyway, and that happened anyway. But we want to be a little bit more um, intentional this time about actually putting some effort behind getting these ideas into the hands of people that might be able to do something about it. So yeah. we put together a whole other committee that's being um, led by Kyle Martin, and um, some and anybody's welcome to participate. So I'd throw that out there too. Thanks. Good. Thanks, Jill. Yeah. Anyone else address the council? <laughs> Not this great stuff happening. Okay, on the council discussion time. Mr. Cernad, nothing? Okay. Um, yeah, I'd like to thank uh, Amanda, Jimmy, Nadine, Aaron, and Amanda again um, for not only coming tonight, but for getting organized and being proactive in your neighborhood. Um, your emails were really detailed and well-researched, and um, <coughs> so obviously this is on everyone's radar, but thanks for coming tonight. And I also want to thank... Um, staff for also responding, providing us with information and um, also responding to you all as well. Um, so that, and then I, I want to thank Chief McHale for organizing um, the trip earlier this week for a group of us to go and see the Scott uh, Emergency Communication Center out in Davenport as we decide as a city what is best in our public safety needs, uh, educating ourselves on what the options are what's out there and what would be best for Marion is the best way to make decisions, data-driven decisions. So that was a great opportunity to go um, and participate in that as well. And again, thank you for the appointment um, to the uh, Corridor Metropolitan Planning uh, Commission or organization. I look forward to serving in that capacity. That's it. Steve? Yeah, so uh, Randy and I were at the library uh, having our city council open hours there last Saturday. So we had two people stop by. Uh, one was to inquire or provide some comments about the tower terrace alignment. Uh, the second one was to compliment our group on snow removal that just happened that night before. So I would also compliment them uh, since I went down to Cedar Rapids and it was not as nice as it was <laughs> in Marion. So I'll just make that comment and move on. I would like to also thank the neighborhood for coming in tonight, and I didn't even have time to respond to your emails. You, were, you came in so quickly, but, um, and you must have just a great neighborhood, how you, you know, communicated so well together, so thanks for coming in. We know Paul has something to share. <laughs> You'll all want to hear this. We get this great <laughs> lesson from Paul every, every meeting, so. Well, what, I, what I'd like to talk about this evening is um, we talked about our park a little bit on Tuesday, and I'd like to talk about the downtown park a minute. Uh, originally in 1891, that was called Washington Park. It later became Green Square, which uh, you kind of hear a little bit. In 1891, they leveled that park. It was mostly sandy and full of cottonwood trees. And they took all the cottonwood trees down in 1891, and the we have a great variety of trees in that uptown park, all the way from uh, <clears throat> the big hackberry trees that are probably were planted in 1891. Uh, we have a Dawn Redwood tree up by the roadway in the city square park, which is unusual. That park was used for many things over the years, from circuses to carnivals to band for 15 years. And in today's Marion paper, it talks about 30 years ago, and I can't believe, uh, I know I had darker hair, but 30 years ago, we moved the depot into the park from its previous setting, which was in the shopping mall back corner, and we went to uh, over to Omaha to talk to Noddle Development, who had bought that land, including the depot, trying to dis discourage them from tearing it down and making it part of the shopping mall, calling it Depot Mall, and because the building was there, it was solid and good. And they said, no, you can't do that, but I said, well, can we have some of it? Can we save some of it? And he says, you can have anything you want from that depot. Well, about a month later, I get a call. He said, what in the 
hell are you doing? I said, well, I'm taking the roof. I think you said we could have anything. So we moved the roof into the park. We jacked it up in the air, 28 feet, and built the building you see today under it. To do that, it was probably the greatest gathering of public support that this city has seen, all the way from Girl Scout troops, Boy Scout troops, uh, the Legion, every service club, about 100 volunteers. We cleaned a few more than 100,000 brick that came from the original building. The window sills are from the original building. And I can tell you, we had a real hero in our community called Virgil Coonrod, Coonrod Construction. I called Virgil and he told him what I wanted to do and he was a real railroad guy. And he said, well, yeah, I'll be out. On Good Friday of 1988, he brought four cranes and nine guys to Marion, Iowa, and we took the roof off of that building. And he never charged the city or anyone anything. That roof weighed 87,000 pounds when we took it off of there and took it into the park. We lost one tree in the park, which was a soft maple tree, and it fit right in there with the hackberries. And I think the other things, and, and I'll, I won't try not to take a lot of time, but you know, 100,000 bricks cleaning with a chisel. We did it out at Public Works, and they ran some airlines out so we could use an air chisel. And we worked night and day, all weekends, and our then mayor, Vic Kloppenstein, declared that area, do you know you have a park out there, Ryan? You have a park. Uh, we discovered in a park you could drink beer. <laughs> so, so while we were cleaning bricks, we could drink a little bit of beer. <laughs> but I, I got to tell you, Virgil Coonrod, in addition, I called him up and I said, Virgil, I got a flagpole and public record needs to know him. Where at? He said, I said, at the old police station. He said, what do you want to do with it? I said, I want to put it in the center of the park. He said, well, I'll send the boys out to look for it. Look at it. And he measured it all up. He said, well, you need to put a sleeve, concrete, and put a sleeve in the middle of the park, and the boys will be over to get it. They come over. One guy climbed that flagpole like a monkey, and they hooked the thing on top and cut it off. Virgil took it to the park, and we put it in the ground. That flagpole is very historic in the middle of our park. It sits there today. The street lights in the park were samples in our suburb to the west as they decided what kind of street lights they were going to use. And if you look at them, that's why they're all three of them different. One of them has three lights, one, two, and one, one. I called up Lee Lu and I said, who was president of Alliant. Alliant. And I said, hey, we need those lights. And he said, well, I'll see what they cost. I said, no, you don't understand. We need those lights in Marion. And they gave them to us. Wayne Engel, who was ENS Electric, installed them in the park. So the lights are there without cost to our city. And I'll quit on this one, but the caboose was in the backyard on the southeast side of Cedar Rapids. I called Virgil, and Virgil said, what the hell do you want now, Draper? I said, well, I've got this caboose on the southeast side, and we need it in the park. He said, all right, I'll come and look at it. He sent two cranes over there, hooked onto that caboose, lifted it over the garage, had some tires all set up, wheels on train cars are pegged. They're not, nothing holds them on except they're pegged in there. That's why you see a train wreck, you see all the tires separate from the trains. He uh, hooked it on, had a semi there, lifted all the wheels over for the caboose, pulled it to Marion like a trailer. We had the trackage all set up, ready to set it in there, and set it in there. Uh, that, that caboose came from the Crandike, uh, which we asked permission 10 years ago to paint Milwaukee Road colors because we are a Milwaukee Road town. But I, I just 
hope that people remember the volunteerism, time and money that has gone into the city of Marion. Thank you. Well, we thank you for your leadership in that effort, Paul. Thank you. Um, on my part, I'll just say that uh, good meeting tonight. Thank you, everyone. And yesterday I had a great time at Marion High School for my monthly lunch with students. Had a lot of great discussions. And uh, I'll be at the library. At, at, not at the library. I was at the library last Saturday. I think you were there two weeks ago. <laughs> two weeks, but, two weeks uh, ago. On Saturday, I'll be at Hy-Vee for coffee with the mayor, and Renee's going to be joining me. So come out and see me at 8 o'clock at Hy-Vee. Get some donuts. Thank you. Meeting's adjourned. <laughs>